right, we are recording. Yo, what's up, guys? It's Jacob here right now. I'm on a boat. I'm on a boat, and um, I just want to uh, want to comment on a couple things. I trust that you just finished reading uh, five words that will change your life. Right now, I just finished my uh, morning meditation with the sunrise, and I just came back from a run. So, um, just to go into uh, what you read above real quickly. Um, so, the word try to me, big turn off. Anytime I ever hear anyone say try, I immediately think that there's a 90% chance that they will fail. Um, it just lets me know that they're not confident, and especially when I use the word. So when I catch myself saying try, I check myself to see if I actually believe that I'm going to be able to do what I'm saying that I'm going to try to do. And if I am, if I do believe it, then I make sure that I rephrase that sentence, no matter if it's to myself or in conversation. So that's try. Uh, after try, there was can't. Can't is a huge turnoff. Um, to me, it's like the, the kissing cousin of um, a limiting belief. If you don't know what a limiting belief is, I highly recommend that you check it out. Um, maybe I'll uh, write something on that in the future. Um, but anytime I hear the word can't, I just I know that someone is limiting what they're what they are um, perceiving that they're able to do, even if they're not aware that they're doing it. Um, so can't is a huge turnoff for me. Um, again, if you ever hear someone say the word can't, really question yourself um, as to if that's true or not. The next word need is not as much of a of a of a turnoff for me as try and can't. Need is probably only uh, more of a like a like a pet peeve that I had growing up. Um, but I still recommend that you watch when people say the word need. If it comes from a place of like, I need to do this to get that, I can understand. Like for me, I need to practice my, be consistent on my fundamentals in order to be where I want to be in life. But if someone's like, uh, you know, <clears throat> I need, I just, I just, I need you to go away or I need a cup of coffee or something like that. Almost where like they won't be all right if it doesn't happen. Um, I get particularly turned off there. So need um I'm, I'm still on the, the the verge of but uh i think it can go either way all right so um we got try can't need but but is huge right so there's really two different t uh, contexts in which but um which you wait which you may want to watch out for but so uh the first is in like i said in um in conversation when you're debating with someone and if someone is, uh, you know, if you feel the, the flow going back and forth and you just find like you're cutting each other off and it's, it's a very butt-like conversation. So if, uh, if I'm arguing with someone or debating, I mean, I don't argue, come on, I'm too sophisticated for that. But let's say we're, we're having a conversation and this and that. If you catch yourself using but, it kind of just cuts the energy short right there. So I, I try to use... See how I just said try, call myself? So I like to use the word um, yes and. It's actually a theory of Ken Wilber's, but if you, if you just practice using it, um, it makes a huge difference. So watch out for yes and and see where you can replace but with yes and. Um, the, next, the next use of the word but is really something that you can watch out for as far as if you say something, like I'll give you a perfect example. Yesterday I was walking through Bryant Park in Manhattan, and I there was you know Bryant Park. It's a lot of corporate people over there. There's a young girl, maybe like 21 years old, 23 years old, and she's with the table with another three girls. And she goes, and I'm walking by, and real you know real loudly she goes, I hate dropping names, but and before I even heard the rest of the sentence, I just knew she was gonna drop the name. So what the butt did there was it disqualified what she said before that. So it's almost like when you say the word butt. You take out from underneath what you just, the mean, the power, the meaning, like the emphasis, the value to what you said before that. So watch out for the word but. Um, and now to, to finish it off, the word um, yet is like one of my favorite words because what you can do is when you find yourself saying something negative or, or using the word can't or something like that, if you come in and you put the word yet at the end of it, it totally negates that negative or limiting belief that you can't do that. So um, if you're going to say something like, uh, damn, I just I can't figure out how to you know, get this uh, printer working, right? Right there, you're, you're just affirming to yourself that you're not going to be able to do it. And your mind, your subconscious mind takes that in and, and it says, all right, we're not going to be able to do it. You just programmed your, your mind to not be able to do that. 
So what I, if I ever catch myself doing that, what I most of the time, and I'm pretty good at, at um, catching myself now, is I'll put the word yet at the end. So I can't figure out how to get this printer working yet. And that makes a huge difference. And then once I catch myself um, doing that, once I'm like, all right, well, I can't do this yet, then what I'll do is I'll actually rephrase the sentence. So I'll be like, up until now, and that's like a huge keyword for me, up until now, I haven't been able to figure out how to get this printer working or how to get my marriage in a good place or whatever the issue is. Up until now, I haven't been able to make an amazing vegetable lasagna. Um, so something like that. And um, I, I use this like I use this method particularly when I'm like in a tight situation. So I used to do IT work, and uh, we did um, I did IT consulting and also some help desk stuff. So like if I was working on a printer issue, and I, it's, a printer issue is really a minor, small thing, so it should be a quick fix. But let's say I found myself like 5, 10, 15, 45 minutes into it, and I'm still working on this, and I, by then, my thought process is just not that clear. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll catch myself, and I'll remove myself from the situation, take a deep breath and walk away for like two or three minutes, maybe five minutes. And I'll, t I'll tell my subconscious mind, I'll say subconscious mind, um, what we're going to do right now is we're going to figure out how to fix this printer. I turn my conscious mind off. After I say that, forget about this. I focus, I'll go have small talk, chit chat, whatever it is. And I'll let my subconscious mind figure out what it needs to do. I'll come back to the issue, you know, deep breath in me. And believe it or not, you know, a couple minutes later, the problem's 85% of the time fixed. Um, or I have more clarity on it. So that's a huge heads up. I highly recommend if you ever catch yourself stuck somewhere that um, you watch how you're talking to yourself. It's huge. Huge. Um, and that, uh, I think that about wraps it up. So I, th these words are really something that mean a lot to me. Um, I've got like another five or 10 that I could write about, but I wanted to start short and simple. Hope you guys dig it. Um, and I'm freaking psyched. There's a lot more to come. So stay tuned. Peace.